my respects to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, please forgive me for sitting on a chair. I am a doddering old man, cannot stand up for a long time while delivering my presentation. I find myself into two kinds of difficulties. Here, I am in the presence of great big stalwarts in music who have taken their research to dizzy heights. I feel like a small rowing boat in the presence of great ocean liners. <laughs> so therefore, another difficulty is most of his, uh, most of the subjects discussed was on Carnatic music, where I am perhaps a lone uh, talker on Indian classical music, and my presentation would be of very elementary level. My subject will be how computers are helping us in pursuing our music, learning more, more of it. Now. Starting from the very scratch, this instrument that you have seen there, the electronic tanpura, was designed by a computer, all right. What is a tanpura? Tanpura is a four or six stringed instrument which provides you with the tonic or the sa all the time that you sing or perform. The same pitch, same saw, can be played on the sarod. How different is the sound? Although they belong to the same pitch. How is this different? Because each sound has got one basic waveform. Along with it, depending on different instruments, there are other secondary waveforms, harmonics, fifth harmonic, third harmonic, and in case of every instrument, the basic waveform is always there, and there are some chosen harmonics coupled with the basic they produce the particular sound of the instrument which we describe as timbre. Now, this is one field where computer has helped us. Secondly, I seem to be lost in the fog. Con <laughs> reproducing percussion. Our percussion is tabla. The Dakshini percussion is mridangam. So tabla syllables, dha, din, din, na. They are also recorded and analyzed. And the result of the analysis is fed into a computer which with its associate uh, microprocessors and chips reproduces that sound and it goes into a speaker and produces the tabla sound. So the tabla, those people who can cannot sort of uh, have a tabla player all the time, they take records to this tabla, uh, tabla playing instrument in which the cycles of tabla playing like dha, din, din, na, na, din, din, na, or din, na, din, din, na, din, na, din, din, na, they are produced. Another area where computer modeling can be applied is creating various phrases which we either on instrument or on the voice go on repeat repeating and practicing in order to acquire 
fluency of music. In our terminology, they are called paltas. One such palta simply with sari gama. Sare ga, sare sa, gare. The next one will be re gama, re gare ma ga, gama pa gama ga pa ma. This particular pattern can be transformed into a computer language and the entire range of say three octaves are the up there and down there. They can be taken up by the computer and the paltas that can be made in this range of those particular sarigamas, they are produced in a GP. So we can learn from that. Another one is Sare saga samagya gare. There can be millions of such, you know, compositions. Why are we going through this? Sare saga samagya gare. What will be the next one? Kustu. Go on. The same pattern is being repeated all over the octaves. Hmm. Sare ga ni sare ga ma. Ga ma pa re ga ma pa ga. Ma pa da ni pa pa da ni sa. What will be the reverse? Sa ni da sa ni da pa ma. You can see that these are the fragments or building blocks of which our thorns are made. A learner in the primary stage of his or her learning takes recourse to written thorns. Whatever they are, just like a child learning to talk fluently. How does a child learn talking? First of all, unintelligible words or sounds, then simple words like Papa, Mama, I am hungry, I am angry, then further complicated sentences, and then the process of joining the sentences into meaningful paragraphs describing the subject. In our case, the subject is the Raga. Now, by going through these, there are much more complicated paltas. Sare saga sama sapa sada bama gare san. These are parts of dance. In our music as well as in Dakini music, southern music, Carnatic music. And there can be many thousands of such dance uh, in order to acquire fluency of thorns so that just when you are a speaker speaking about a subject, you don't lose track. You can generate sentences. Each sentence can be followed by another sentence which, which, is, which relates to it and which is, uh, you know, uh, connected to it in some way or other. When we perform we perform not from rote, not from memory, but just like speaking, we perform, we, we generate dance, and the faculty of generating these dance is greatly 
augmented by practicing these paltas. Next we come to tihais. Why we don't? This will of course uh, relate to Am I boring you? Tell me when I am and I will run away from the ostrom. Uh, a tihai is a phrase which is repeated thrice three times to reach this first beat of the cycle or the first note of that particular composition. Now, ga ga re ga pa ma ga re ga ta ne da ne sa re ga ga is the first note of the cycle and in tabla dha din din na na din din na this the high how is does it come dha ne sa re ga dha ne sa re ga dha ne sa re ga ga re ga etc we have to repeat any particular phrase which ends on ga and comes here after repeated three, being repeated three times. This is a tihai. Tihai has got several components. Main body of the tihai is dhani sa re ga. Then there can be gaps between two two of these uh, phrases, dhani sa re ga, and then finally dhani sa re, excuse me, formidable handwriting. Uh, this is the main phrase. It starts from the first beat. What is this dash? This is a gap. Gen you know, denoted by this dash. Three times we are repeating dhani sa re ga, then this a, or a gap. Again another gap and finally the ga comes on the first beat. There can be many types of the highs. P is the phrase, main phrase of the tehai. It has got five notes. This is the gap denoted by G. G here is one. Another dhani sarega, five. Another one. Another dhani sarega. After that, there's no gap. Have you done the, you know, arithmetic of the a monkey climbing up a greased pole, going up two feet, coming by one feet, going by another two feet, coming by, but when it goes up the last two feet, there's no coming down. It reaches the top. So therefore, we have only two gaps here. But this whole thing, I don't know the computer language, can be fed into a computer and it can rattle out many such tihais in different ragas. Another instrument which I would like to speak about is the synthesizer. 
it can produce so many kinds of sound. It can produce a violin sound, a clarinet sound, the sound of a flute. This is exactly by the same sequence of operations. Analyze the sound. What is the basic? What are the uh, harmonics added to this sound? In what quantity? Sometimes the basic is generally the highest quantity. Others are more feeble. But they ultimately join up to give you the particular timbre of the sound. So the synth or the synthesizer at the flick of a switch can turn a violin into a flute. There also, it is the work of the computers right from the beginning to end. Another important gift of the computer to us is its capacity to lower or raise the pitch. My CDs are there, bring it, bring them out. You have a CD player, sir? What you will hear from this CD is one particular singer singing at one particular pitch, his size at one level. The next one will be at a higher level. The utility of this capacity of the computer, I will tell you later on. The first one. Sharapat Hussain Khan. Try to place the sa. Sa. This is the sa. This is the scale. As far as possible, try to remember this melody, not very long. You go to the second track. Two, three notes above.
That is the song. Stop. Now we'll get Ustad Bade Gulawali Khan singing at a lower level and then we'll bring him up to a more baritone level. The third star track is the work of a computer and its software. We can do anything with it when it actually comes into use. When you try to create an album of one particular singer or instrumentalist, picking up different parts, different performances from different places, you will always find very often than not but the scales are a little different. Sa, sa, and it took it very minutely. Ga, ga. So one performance following another gives you a jar. You are expecting the same sa. That is where this particular quality of the computer comes to your aid. Another very important part of the computer's work is we people are always running after fast pawns, particularly the sitar players. They're all after Bilal Khan. Absolutely whirlwind turns. You can you can understand that they're a whirlwind turns, but you cannot follow their composition. I tried in my childhood to elongate the tans, but I had no computer to help me. I had only a 78 RPM turntable. Soon as I reduced the speed from 78 to 45, or even 30, 33, Lata Mangeshka started sounding like Gola Khan. And Ghulam Ali Khan sir came down to such a level, it sounded like a dying, dying buffalo. So we could not really succeed in what we wanted to hear. Here again, the computer lifts you up to the same level, same sa, elongating the turn to thrice or four times the length, so that the difference between the gaps between notes are much larger for you to comprehend and write down. This is in a way some sort of thieving, but I am taking Golawali as my guru. That's about all that I wanted to. Oh, Bilal Khan Sab. You don't. The last part of my talk was Bilal Khan Sab's Khan and how they have been elongated.
elongated are you hearing several You can hear it right down. <laughs> Next one. advantage of this process is that in a very much slower speed some minute inaccuracies in note even in Bilal Khanzab can be detected but the, <laughs> he reached at least this height most of the time he played accurate notes but we the younger generation in our desperate bid to do the same most of our notes are inaccurate. They don't read the, they don't fall on the same steps. Go on. Here I come to the end of my humble and elementary presentation. If I have bored you, please forgive me. <laughs> oh, nothing, I'm sorry. Uh, plenty of drummers have been talk, talked about. In our um, uh, system of music, we also use gamaks. Gamak is oscillation between two notes. Say, Re ga, re 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 re. I'm going to ga, coming back today. Another gamak is ga 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 ga, starting from re and ending on ga. Re 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 re, ga 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 ga, re 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 re, ga 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 ga, ma 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 ma. Spending more time on re, ga. These things can be, you know, connotated in a very elementary style. <coughs> they, 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 they. Ga ga ga, and if it is re re re, it will be ga ga ga, ma ma ma, from the previous notes. We have got notations in our own elementary way of uh, gamaks, krintans, another or, uh, ornamentation.
Clinton is climbing down from a higher note to a lower note by cutting the string with your nails. Gare uh, gare. Cutting is here. This is Arisa Arisa. And the other is, the reverse of this Krintan is Sparsh. Sare, sare, sare. Next. Cutting is here. So we have devised our own elementary notation or language to describe various musical actions. Once again I beg you leave and sorry to bother you. <laughs>